Hi everyone, in today's video we will be learning about percentage. In this first section, we will learn how to express a percentage as a fraction, express a percentage as a decimal, express one quantity as a percentage of another, compare two quantities by percentage, as well as to interpret percentages that are greater than 100%. Back in primary school, we have learned that x% percent is equal to x over 100. With this understanding of the equivalence, it helps us to convert a percentage to a fraction as well as a decimal. In this example, we will be learning how to convert percentages to fractions or decimals. In our very first question, we want to express 72% as a fraction. So we know that 72% is equal to 70 over 100 based on the equivalence that we covered earlier. With 72 over 100, it is a fraction already. However, we need to simplify our fraction all the time. So 72 over 100 upon simplification gives us the value 18 over 25. And that is how we convert 72% to a fraction. Then, what if you need to actually convert 72% to a decimal? So 72% when converted to a decimal, because it is equal to 72 over 100, we know that by dividing a number by 100, we can move the decimal to decimal place to the left, okay, in this case, two times. So that will actually give us 0 0.72. However, if you're not confident in doing that, you could always rely on your calculator to convert 72 over 100 to a decimal. Next, what if I'm given 9 over 25 as, uh, and I want to convert it into a percentage? So for the value 9 over 25, what we will do is to multiply it by 100%. However, do take note that when I press this 9 over 25 times 100% into the calculator, I do not actually key in the percentage sign. So what I will key into the calculator is 9 over 25 times 100. And in your calculator, you would get the value of 36. So just to emphasize again, okay, we have to write 100% and not 100. The reason is because in order for the two values over here to be equivalent, 9 over 25 is equivalent to 9 over 25 times 100%. Okay, 100% has a value of 1. So essentially, we're multiplying over here 9 over 25 times 1. Okay, so 9 over 25 times 1 is equal to 9 over 25. Therefore, you need to write down 100% and not 100 because by multiplying by 100 itself, it is no longer equivalent. Next, when keying into calculator, as mentioned earlier, we don't press the percentage sign. So to get 36, we will only press into our calculator 9 over 25 times 100. So the percentage sign remains okay, in our eventual answer. So to show an, or rather illustrate another example, to express 0 0.15 as a percentage. So likewise, 0 0.15 as a decimal is equivalent or equals to 0 0.15 times 100% when we want to convert to a percentage. When we key into our calculator, we will only press 0 0.15 times 100. So I will be able to get the value of 15 and that will actually give us 15% that is equivalent to 0 0.15. So looking at these examples over here, we learned that when given a percentage and I want to convert it into a fraction or a decimal, what I need to do is to divide by 100. On the other hand, if I'm given a value and I want to convert that value or, num or the number to a percentage, I will have to multiply by 100, okay, but in my working, I will multiply by 100% to show that they are actually equivalent in value over here. Let's further our understanding about conversion between percentages, fractions, and decimal. So in this particular case, we are given 
four and two over three percent, and and we want to express that as a fraction and a decimal. While four and two over three itself, without the percentage sign, is a fraction, but in this particular question, okay, you are given four and two over three percent. Okay, so this is a percentage itself, and I want to convert it into a fractional value as well as a decimal value. So if you recall earlier on in the example that we have given, we have shown, okay, when we are given a percentage and I want to convert it into a fraction or decimal, what I need to do is to divide that particular number by 100. So we will be arriving with 4 and 2 over 3 percent equals to 4 and 2 over 3 divided by 100. It is as though my percentage sign converts to this particular value divided by 100. If you can see the way I actually use different font color for the percentage sign and divide by 100 to draw that comparison and emphasis. Then you could key into your calculator to help you. 4 and 2 over 3 divided by 100 will give you the fraction 7 over 150. You may need to press your calculator for the function whereby it changes a fraction to a decimal or vice versa. I hope you're familiar with that button in your calculator. So we have arrived at the fractional value 7 over 150 that is equal to 4 and 2 over 3 percent. Then for 7 over 150, using my calculator function as well, I will be able to convert it into a decimal and it happens to be a recurring decimal. Hence, my answer will be 0 0.046 with a dot on top. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, we are given 22.5%. It is a decimal over here, however, it is a decimal percentage. So again, similar to question 5, in order to convert this into a fraction or a decimal, what we will have to do is to divide 22.5 by 100, key that into our calculator. The fraction that we will get is 9 over 40, and eventually I will get a decimal as well. Okay, by using my calculator function, and that leads us to 0 0.225. Now that we have done conversion of a percentage into a fraction and a decimal, let's take a look at what if I'm given a fraction and I want to convert it into a percentage. So in comparison to the previous example, if you recall, when given a number and I want to convert it into percentage, I need to multiply by 100%. So 5 over 6 is equal to 5 over 6 times 100%. Again, we must put the percentage sign over here in order to maintain the equivalence between the, right, the expression on the right as well as the value 5 over 6. Then, keying into your calculator, 5 over 6 times 100 without the percentage sign, you would be able to get 83 and 1 over 3. While it is easy for you to listen and watch this video to assume that my answer is right, I really urge you to actually press into your calculator to learn how to convert, okay, or to press 5 over 6 times 100, right, to get 83 and 1 third, to verify that my answer is actually correct, okay? So we shouldn't be actually pressing the percentage sign in our calculator at all. And finally, if I want to express 0 0.769, which is a decimal value, as a percentage, so similar to question 7, I will multiply this particular value by 100%, but in my calculator, I will just have to multiply by 100 will do. I maintain the percentage sign, okay? So my answer will be 60, sorry, 76.9%. I just uh, put this dot very significantly over here just in case you can't see it. So with these two pages of example from question 1 to question 8, I hope that you are clear about how to actually convert a percentage over here on the left into a fractional or decimal. And over on the right, okay, to convert a number, a simple number, 
into a percentage. Let's continue to learn how to express percentages into fractions or mixed numbers or else decimals. In this particular slide, we are looking at expressing percentages that are greater than 100% or less than 1%, meaning to say very large percentages or very, very small percentages. Unlike earlier on, we kept to a number that is between 0 to 100. So looking at this first example here, we want to express 238.7% as a fraction and a decimal. So again, because this is a percentage value, and in order for us to convert it into a fraction, we will divide 22, sorry, we will divide 238.7 by 100. So using my calculator to help me in this calculation, you would be able to get 2 and 387 over 1000. That is a mixed number itself. And then also using your calculator function, you could actually conclude that it is equals to 2.387. So this is how we convert this percentage into a fraction or mixed number or else a decimal as well. Similarly, looking at the percentage 0.5%, in order to convert it into a fraction or a decimal, again, I will take 0.5 and divide by 100. Then using my calculator, it will lead us to the fraction 1 over 200, which is also equals to 0 0.005. So whenever we are given a percentage, regardless of the value okay, of the number itself, okay, whatever percentage we're given, we always divide by 100 in order to convert it into a fraction or decimal. We will next learn how to find percentage of a quantity. So let's take a look at this example. It says that a class has 40 students of which 15 are boys and the rest are girls. In the first part, we are, they are asking, sorry, they are asking if 25% of the class wear spectacles, find the number of students who do not wear spectacles. So what we will first do is to determine the number of students who do not wear spectacles. And that will actually be 100 minus 25% times 40. The reason is because 25% of them wear spectacles. So with 100% as the whole, minus the way 25%, it will get us 75%. And that 75% is the percentage of students who do not wear spectacles. So multiplying by 40 okay, will help us to determine the quantity itself. And in this particular case, we will get the value 30. In the next part of the question, it asks, 60% of the girls have long hair. We want to find the number of girls with long hair. So keep in mind that in this question, it says 60% of the girls. So I need to know how many girls are there. This is different from in part A, whereby it says 25% of the class. So we need to always pay attention, okay, do not just the percentage itself, but also of what is the percentage referring to. So 60% of the girls would mean that I must know how many girls are there first before I can determine what is this value or this quantity 60% supposed to be. So in my first step, I will find the number of girls and that is 40 minus 15 because there are 15 boys and the remaining number of students will have to be girls. Then, to find out the number of girls with long hair, that is 60% of the number of girls, so 60% times 25, that will actually give us 60 over 100 times 25. So pressing this into a calculator, we will get the value of 15. Therefore, the number of girls with long hair is 15. Now that we have a better understanding about percentages, we need to be able to tell, okay, into uh, just at a glance from a question or a situation, why the percentage of a quantity may or may not be correct. So looking at this example, 
where it says Bernard was asked to find the value of 250% of $100. And his answer is apparent, was apparently $25. So by looking at this statement itself, we will think to ourselves, does this make sense? Could 250% of $100 be actually equals to $25? So without performing any calculations, we want to actually explain to Bernard why his answer is incorrect. While of course, okay, it may be easy to show Bernard that, hey, if I do my calculation, you are wrong. But what if he just doesn't understand, okay, why your calculations work, okay? So how do we then go about explaining to him that he is incorrect still? So how would to actually go about explaining without performing any, uh, sorry, performing any calculations is that we can say that since 100% is equal to one whole, which is something that we are definitely clear in, and 100% of $100 will have to be $100 because one whole in this case refers to the $100. And since we know that 250% is greater than 100%, naturally, when 250, sorry, when 250% is taken out of $100, the value, the amount of money that we're looking at will have to be greater than $100. And therefore, we can conclude that his answer is certainly incorrect. So this is how we could go about explaining to Bernard that, hey, you're wrong, okay? And the reason you're wrong is because that I know 100% is equals to one whole. And 250, sorry, 250% is greater than 100%. So surely when taken out of $100, the value must be greater, to, uh, greater than $100 itself. It cannot be $25 since 25 is smaller than $100. Next, we will learn how to express one quantity as a percentage of another quantity. So given in this particular example, there are, tw there are 15 boys and 25 girls in the class. In the first part of the question, it asks to express the number of boys as a percentage of the number of girls. I tried to color code it according to the header over here so that you could follow easily. Okay, likewise to my working subsequently as well. So express the number of boys okay, as a percentage of the number of girls. So number of boys come first. So the required percentage that we want in order to answer this question is to take the number of boys that is 15 in this case. And since it is supposed to be a percentage of the number of girls, your denominator needs to be the number of girls. So 15 over 25 is the fraction that we're looking at. And in order to convert it into a percentage, we need to multiply it by 100%. And keep in mind that when I key into calculator, we never ever press the percentage sign. So we will get equals to 60%. Okay, that will be the required percentage. Then in my second part of this question, we are looking at finding the number of girls that is, ex uh, that is expressed as a percentage of the of boys. So in this case, the number of girls is to be expressed out of the number of boys. So number of girls needs to be in the numerator, that will be 25 girls, out of the number of boys, that is 15 times 100%. So we will then get 166 and 2 over 3%. Okay. Our denominators need not always be actually be bigger than the numerator. So we need to be certain okay, in how the question is being phrased, or rather we need to refer to how the question is being phrased in order to suitably form the fraction itself and then okay, keying into our calculator to get the percentage that we want for this question. Moving on to the third part of this question, we look at general terms, okay, in a general sense to just now uh, when we talk about the number of boys and number of girls. 
So given that A and B represent the number of boys and girls in class respectively, how do we actually go about understanding okay, the question in terms of words, percentage, fraction, decimal and ratio? We need to recognize that all these statements are equivalent to one another. So let's take a, take a look at the very first column. In words, when A is a percentage of B, A refers to the number of boys and B refers to the number of girls. So when I want to look at the number of boys as a percentage of the number of girls, that is actually my answer to A part I just now, where we were looking for the number of boys as a percentage of the number of girls. So in A part I, we have found that the answer is 60%. Okay, so we say that the number of boys is 60% of the number of girls. When given a statement like this, its equivalent is that A is equal to 60% times B. So what you can think about is that the word is is actually equal sign in math terms, and the word of is like the multiplication sign in uh, math terms as well. So converting words to percentage, they are actually equivalent statements. Then from percentage to fraction, we know that 60% when converted into a fraction is actually 60 over 100. But of course, 60 over 100 is not the simplified fraction. The simplified fraction would actually be 3 over 5. Right, so I'm just trying to draw a comparison over here, which explains why I didn't simplify this fraction. Okay, but of course, in most in any answer that we give, we also always give it in a simplified form. So all these three statements over here are equivalent at this juncture. Then the decimal, okay, how do I then convert to the equivalent in decimal? So 60 over 100 is actually equivalent to 0 0.6 as a decimal. Okay, so A is equal to 0 0.6 times B. Now, let's take a look at what if I need to express the statement in ratio terms. How do I actually know what is the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls? Well, of course, in our earlier example, I already know the number of boys to number of girls. But how do I make use of these earlier statements to actually do that form of conversion. Okay, I want us to be able to recognize that A is to B actually has a similar idea in a fractional form as A over B. Okay, so earlier on when we learned algebra, I know that in this particular statement here where A equals to 0 0.6 times B, I could Consider it as A divided by B equals to 0 0.6, whereby I brought the times B over here to the left. And that will actually mean that A divided by B equals to 0 0.6. Okay, so A is to B in this case is the same understanding as A over B. And A over B, okay, now is actually equals to 0 0.6. And 0 0.6 as a decimal, sorry, as a fraction itself, would actually be equal to 3 over 5. So, in other words, A is to B in ratio form is equal to 3 is to 5. If you have understood, okay, whatever that has been explained in the very first column over here, I would like to urge you to give the our second column a try, okay, whereby I want to give the hint that in our second column, we are actually looking at the number of girls, that is B, as a percentage of the number of boys, that is A. In other words, we are looking at our answers from A part 2 earlier on, whereby we found the number of girls as a percentage of that number of boys. Okay, so what would you actually fill in these boxes over here. I'd like you to pause this video, okay, to give this a try right before you check the answers uh, in the next, uh, after you have done trying. 
I hope that you have given it a try. The answers will actually be that B is 166 and 2 over 3% of A. By converting this statement over here into mathematical terms, it means that B is equal to 166 and 2 over 3% of A. Then, 166 and 2 over 3% when converted into a fraction, that will be to take 166 and 2 over 3 divided by 100, I will get 1 and 2 over 3. Then, converting 1 and 2 over 3 into a decimal by relying on some help from our calculator, okay, we should get the decimal 1.66666, that is a recurring decimal, so we write it as 1.6 with a dot on top. Then by the logic that I shared with you, okay, earlier on about converting to a ratio statement, okay, when I divide the A over to the left, 1.66666 is equivalent to the ratio of 5 is to 3, or the fraction of 5 is to 3. Therefore, I hope that you're able to get these answers for the questions on the second column. In our last example for the first section covering on percentage, we want to look at how do we compare the equivalence of two statements on percentages. So looking at this example, it says that Li Ting writes the following statement. If A, that is some number itself, some quantity, is 20% more than B, then we could conclude that B is 20% less than A. What do you think about this statement? Explain in this question if you agree with this statement or not. So, what do you think? Would you agree or disagree? Alright, so let's go about trying to explain and figure out what does it mean by A is 20% more than B. So, if A is 20% more than B, we will know that A is 120%. And B is 100%. So if I say B is 100%, A being 20% more, that will mean that A is equal to 120% times B. Okay. In other words, percentage into fraction would be 120 over 100 times B. And that will give us 6 over 5 times B. Okay. Now, now that we see that A is equal to 6 over 5 times B, how does that compare when I'm trying to verify in my last in my second part of the statement that is B is 20% less than A? That means that if A is 100%, we are considering that B should be 80%. Okay, so I need to do a check over here. Now that we know A is equal to 6 over 5 times B, okay, that means that if I divide 6 over 5 to the left side of this equation, I'm going to get A divided by 6 over 5 equals to B. And when I divide by a fraction, okay, I can say that it is also the same as A times 5 over 6 equals to B. So, I'm lacking of space over here, so I'm going to continue on the right side. I can say that B is equal to 5 over 6 times A. So I'm just switching this around, okay, in terms of how I present it. In other words, 5 over 6, when I convert this fraction into a percentage, I will multiply by 100%, and I know that 5 over 6 is actually 83 and 1 third percent. Okay. So now I see that my statement, okay, is B equals to 83 and one third percent times A. But earlier on, we know that B is 20% less than A, means that if A is 100%, B should be 80%. Okay, so in this case, the difference, okay, where is that, is such that B is actually 16 and 2 over 3% lesser than A and not 20% lesser than A. Alright, so therefore, in this particular case, 
we conclude that, let me grab my pen, that we disagree with the statement because we have done the verification above. So, I disagree. Okay, so uh, it is not just sufficient to actually show the numbers. You need to answer the question directly since they're asking whether if you agree or not. So do conclude with the statement that you disagree with the statement. 